may the blessings of the Lord be upon you and your family. May the favor of God just watch over you and be over your life. May you see grace and breakthroughs in every area. The Bible says it like this. May his presence go before you, behind you, and beside you. He says that may the spirit of the Lord go before you. May the spirit of the Lord be your rear guard. May you be watched. And like the word that the the Lord gave the children of Israel as they were crossing the Red Sea that the enemy that you see before you you will never see again. May the Lord give you divine breakthrough. May the Lord establish the works of your hand. May the Lord show up divinely in your life. May he show up in, in, in the form of miracles. May he show up in the form of signs. We declare divine healing for those that are trusting God for healing. We declare just a, a breakthrough for those that are trusting God for a breakthrough. For those that are trusting God for employment, make doors open to you. God is able. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can think, ask, or even imagine. So Father, we pray today. Show up in the lives of your people like only you can, Lord. The book of Psalm chapter 84 verse 1 says, How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty! My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and a swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young and plead and be placed a place near the altar. The Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Verse 4 says, Blessed are those that dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. Amen. The Bible says it like this, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They will be ever praising you. Amen. And this, for me, this is the important part, is being blessed is not a condition, it's a position. That means, that means conditions change, environments change, circumstances change, but being blessed doesn't change. Yeah. It only changes when you're out of position yeah. with God. Amen. And so I want you to understand this because sometimes some people say, but hey, the economic climate is like this and this is what is happening. Oh, I'm feeling sick or I've been diagnosed with, with, with having a certain condition. It doesn't change whether you are blessed. Because what, what David is saying here, he says, blessed are those that dwell in your house. That means as long as you are in that secret place, like Psalm 91 says, in the secret place of the Most High, you shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That means God will cover you. God will watch over you. God will keep you. Amen. And the Bible says that he who watches over Israel, watches over you. God keeps you. And so may the Lord just watch over you. May you enjoy a blessed life. Amen. And, and, and your best life. Amen. That means may, 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 may it not just be a life of existing. Amen. Because a lot of people exist. But blessed people don't exist. Amen. There is a joy that you wake up with and, and you're saying, but hey, how can you be happy? Things are not going the way that you want. No, no, no. I'm happy because I'm in the right place with my God. Amen. And so no matter what is coming.
worship God together. Amen. And amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, we're going to praise God. As Pastor said, we are blessed people. Amen. And if we're blessed, we want to give God all the thanks this morning. Oh, because we have something to thank you for. Amen. Come on, let's praise Him right now.
something this morning. Let God be part of that journey with you. You don't have to do it alone. You do not have to do it in your own strength or in your own ability. God says with the, in his word, he says, Lo, I am with you always. He says, in the day of trouble, call upon me. And I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of. So this is my prayer for you this morning. Some of you joining us online. Our prayer is that as you press in, as you connect with God, you have allowed God the space to move and to work in your life. And as God begins to work in your life, situations change. Circumstances change. Whatever is that mountain that is in front of you, that, that obstacle, that, that situation that you think cannot be resolved, that the challenge at work,
counting on me. We can't live our lives in our own alone. We cannot do it. We need God for guidance. We need God for where do we go next? What action do I need to take next? What is your purpose for my life? We need an audience with God. We need time in God's presence because we also need to be one. God, remember in those days, God spoke to the people because he wanted to guide them, lead them, give them the next steps, what to do. But he also spoke to them to warn them. Yeah. Warn them of things to come. Yeah. So if you're not connected to the thought, yeah. You're not going to be warned in time so that you can take the relevant action to be able to not just not go through whatever damn thing is coming your way, but how to deal with it. Sometimes God comes to us to comfort us. We need times of comforting when we're distressed, when we're going through a rough patch, and we need Him. That's the time we need to plug in, stay connected, and we need His love. Survival and success is 100% dependent, not 80 or more. Survival and success is 100% dependent on hearing the voice of God. And you will tell me, and, and I know you know this, I too, when you don't hear his voice, you're not successful, you feel like you're just but when you hear his voice and you know what he wants, even though you go through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil because you know he's with you. Because his word promises that to you and his word is his voice speaking to us. God always wants to speak to us. Remember, there's always a reason for God speaking to his people. And here, if we look in, in Exodus 19, the reason God desired an audience with them, if you go into chapter 20 thereafter, right, and you can do this when you get home, he gave them the commandments, he gave them the laws, he was reining them in. You see, these were people that were slaves, they were under the rulership of the Egyptians, so they were going by the laws of the Egyptians, and God needed to say, no, I, if I want my plan and purpose to be fulfilled in their lives, I have to set it straight with them. I have to speak to them and give them the direction that they need so that they can get to the promised land. Access to God is available to all of us. But there are conditions. You have to have a relationship with God to know what God is saying to us. You know, it's like um, if you don't know, if, if somebody doesn't know you, right? We've all had this experience. Especially some of you guys, you know, when you cut somebody in the traffic, you cut in front of them, then you get some hand signals and you get words being thrown at you. People that don't know you, they can pop in here. They can belittle you, they can curse at you, they can tell you things. But do you expect the same thing from your child? You don't. Because you have a relationship with your child. And you expect a certain level of communication and manner of communication with your child that you don't expect from people that don't know. Yeah. So in the same way, our communication with God, if we know Him, yeah. there should be a level and a manner of communication with Him because we know Him. Yeah. And because we know who He is and we have a relationship with Him, we are able to communicate with him on a level that Moses communicated with. I mean, sometimes when I think about it, how Moses just went up, went up. Everywhere in the Bible, if you go and just go and search in your Bible, if you've got an electronic one, and you say Moses went up and you press the search, you know, the magnifying glass, you press that, you see so many accounts, Moses went up, Moses went up. Because he had a relationship with God. Don't you want that, that relationship where you can just go up? You can just speak to him. When things are going wrong, you need direction, you can just say, I'm going up. I'm going up to the mountain. If your family tells you that today, I'm going up to the mountain, don't go and look where they've gone. They are having their time with God. It's so important for us to be connected to God and to have an audience with Him. You know, we, as, as in, the, in the natural, when we want to have an audience with somebody, we prepare ourselves, right? If you're going to have an audience with your boss or with somebody, if I tell you the president is coming here today, this morning, we would have prepared. But when 
knowing who God 